terms of that Zimbabwe experience, how much of that kind of like impacted your transition into coaching when you did when you did finish your travels? And do, do you think it still impacts you a little bit now in terms of the experiences you built there? Yeah, one hundred percent. I think uh, you know, um, as much as Harrison is about the teaching as well. So I was I was literally you know working in a in a bush school, um, and, and these guys lived in the embers and mud huts. Um, some of them would run maybe nine, ten kilometers to get to school and back. They were fit. They were really fit. Mm -hmm. um, others literally paddled across a lake where there were crocodiles. Uh, I'm not exaggerating. I know I'm prone to stretching stories, but there was genuine wildlife. I, I saw hippo and crocodile uh, less. And this is not a game park, by the way. This is just out in communal bush areas. Um, there is a story about uh, a true story, which I will not uh, bore you with now about my first rural school, uh, the mouse teacher being eaten by a crocodile. Um, I'm not, it, it, it's a bit comical, but, but it's true. Uh, we, uh, before I arrived, in fact, I was replacing that, the, the, the poor unfortunate um, colleague, if you like, that, that passed away in the, hand, the, the teeth of a crocodile. So yeah, it, it was quite, you know, it, it was um, certainly culturally challenging, that's to, to, to say the least. Um, uh, how prepared I was for the experience I had, um, that was debatable, but, uh, you know, I, I loved every minute of it in terms of what I learned about uh, the participant. I know you guys are big on the who, you know, yeah. but how, how do I, you know, uh, teach English and teach uh, um, European history to, you know, the vast majority of those students had never seen a double or, or a flat, a high-rise high flat. And there's about three, four, five vehicles, uh, motorized vehicles in, in about a 20 kilometer area. Um, many of them had never been to the capital city, Harare. Uh, their rural existence was hand plowing and so forth and so on. Now, they weren't backward. They were extremely uh, creative, imaginative and adaptable people, but it was a different culture. And, and I was set this challenge of how do I educate these guys uh and not in a patronizing way but in a meaningful way um and, and to be honest the limitations were on me rather than them and then yeah so i, I got asked then to um the, the word got about that I, I i i could play a bit of basketball volleyball a little bit of rugby and, and then, then i got asked to coach in uh certainly basketball in Bulawayo, which is the second big city in 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 zimbabwe which is the other side of the country and uh, I went up and, 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 and coached the, um, uh, the school team there for a while. And, and again, just learning about the culture, learning about the participants, learning about how they perceive the game, uh, just really got me thinking about, you know, coaching is kind of a science. It's a human science. It's not one size fits all. Um, and, 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 and it's a two-way process. And, 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 and I was humble enough, probably because I didn't know much, um, to try just listen to what these guys were saying to me and, um, how they wanted to play the game uh, and I kind of remained I, you know I learned an awful lot but still very much a rookie when by the time I, I got back to England 